All right, we have a very interesting uh, daf today. We're up to daf Dalid and Tractate of Adizara, learning the laws of how to deal with sacrifices, uh, with, with how to deal with uh, idolatry and idolaters and so forth. But also, we have some very interesting agadita, some interesting midrashim, uh, homiletic literature. So we ended off yesterday saying that in the end times uh, it says Rabbi Shimon Lokish says there's no the, the bottom of our last page that there's no actual hell there's no hell what, what we mean to say here is that when a person dies they could go to hell but in the future after the, in the end times hell will be done away with and what will replace it God is going to take the sun out of its covering, um, <coughs> which perhaps we could say is like the ozone layer or something, I don't know. Mark, <coughs> dear, let the sun shine at its full strength. The wicked will be judged, punished by the heat of the sun, and the righteous will be healed. So uh, an interesting thing, which actually is connected to this week's parsha. If you look at the, um, it's brought the Kedushas Levi brings in this week's parsha of the plague of darkness, where he says that actually the plague of darkness was too much light, and that the wicked were blinded by the light, while the righteous, it, said, it doesn't say there was no darkness in the homes of the Israelites, but there was light, which means there was more light, and so the plague of darkness was kind of a prefix to these end times, we're showing the doinen, a, a taste of the end times. So what does it mean that the wicked will be judged by, by it? And now we're on our daf. So everything brings a scriptural proof. <coughs> and most of these proofs are going to come from the same scripture. Malachi 3.19, Dechsev ki hine hayayim bo bor ketaner. Kol zedem chol yisei risha kash v'lihei do yisom hayayim abo says, Behold, the day is coming when it will come burning like an oven and all of the wanton people and all who do wickedness will be burned up like straw. And they'll be burned on the day that comes, says the Lord of hosts where there will not be left over any root or branch of them. There will be no root of the wicked in this world and no branch for them in the world to come. Tzadikah Misrapim Baba, how do we know that the righteous will be healed by the light of the sun? In the very next verse, it says, Lechem Yerishmi Shemesh Tzadako Marpim Kivanefer it's written in the, the sun will shine for you, for those who fear my name, a sun of righteousness with healing in its wings. It's not only will the righteous be healed by the sun, but they'll enjoy it. The verse continues, and you, meaning the ones who fear the name of God, will go out and he'll be fattened like calves in the stall, be, meaning, you know, be very satisfied and, and enjoying. So we said before, yesterday, in yesterday's daf, uh, this is actually the daf for Friday, so in Thursday's daf, which is actually today, but we're going ahead a little bit. So another explanation, my dogim shviyam, we're talking about, we said that the, the verse that we quoted before says that you made man like the fish of the sea and like the creeping things that have no one to control them. So how else can we understand this verse? We see fish in the sea, the big fish swallow up the little fish. So two people 
if people weren't afraid that they're going to get arrested and so forth for this, they w the powerful people would would take advantage of and swallow up the less powerful people. And they do that. Find the Sanan, this is what we learned in the famous the famous Mishnah uh, in Pirkei Avos, something that we we spoken about often in our videos. Said we should pray for the peace of the government, for the welfare of the government. The government should be successful, because if people and and should continue and so forth, because if people weren't afraid of the government authorities, they would swallow. Want each person would swallow his friend alive, the, the next person alive. And as we've noted many times, Rebbechanina Skanakahanim was persecuted by the Roman government. He was denied his rightful place as the high priest. That's why he was the vice high priests, the vice to many high priests, instead of to just one high priest. Generally, you know, if the president dies, the vice president comes and replaces him. Gemar and Yuma tells us, was it Dafutes or Dafud? Gemar and Yuma. Uh, says that uh, the, in the first base of Mignesh there were only a few dozen high priests in the first temple times. and the second temple times, there were hundreds and hundreds of high priests because there were, the Roman government would, app would appoint people who had government connections, mostly Sadducees, and ignore real righteous people like Rabbi Hanina Skana who deserved to be the high priest, and uh, Sam Seifer discusses these issues a little bit more at length. And, uh, for example, the Sam Seifer says that, you know, we know that people go to the city of refuge to Ari Miklat. When the Kohen Gadol leaves this world, they leave the Ari Miklat. So the question is, which Kohen Gadol, if he's appointed by the government, does that apply, or is it one with Haninus Kanakahanim? And uh, Chassam Seifer's opinion is that only when uh, someone like Rabbi Hanina Skanakahanim, not every year on Yom Kippur, when they send in a falsher, Kohen Gadol, if, uh, a, a high priest who's not worthy of the position, and send him into the Holy of Holies, and then he dies, and they have to pull him out by the string. Or sometimes they, if they had a little bit of schus, they might die a little later, not, on, not in the base of Mikdash, not in the Kodesh Kodesh of Mamish. Uh, but... Um, most of the high priests were very, in that time, Second Temple era, were wicked people who didn't deserve the position. And Rabbi Hanina did deserve the position, and yet, and he was being persecuted by the Roman government, and yet he said, pray for the government. He meant the Roman government. Because uh, uh, it's better than an, an, an anarchy. An anarchy would be much worse than a corrupt government. So let's continue with Hinana Bar Papa Rami. Hinana Bar Papa, he disagreed. Now, I, that's not to say the uh, libertarian, you know, self-government is not good. That that's that's not anarchy. But let's move that aside for now. Hinana Bar Papa Rami. Hinana Bar Papa goes back to discussing the judgment of God on on the heathens. Ksiv Shak Ayelim. It's a new sagi choyach. Job thirty seven twenty three it says that the Almighty did not we don't find that he has too much strength. What does that mean? That, that seems to be a very difficult verse to understand, particularly if we can compare it to the verse in Psalm one forty seven five, we say every day in our prayers, that our Lord is great and he is abundant in strength. Uh, Exodus 15, we also say every day in the Shira Sayyam, the song by the Red Sea. Also, it says, Your right hand, O Lord, is glorified with strength. Um, so, like Kasha, this is really not difficult. When God is judging his people even though he has power to do anything he holds himself back and has mercy on us and that's what it means 
that we don't find the Almighty to be overbearing in his strength. It doesn't mean that God doesn't have the potential for the strength. What it means is that God is merciful, and so he doesn't you know, strike us down with a, a lightning bolt every time we sin. When dealing with our enemies in war, on the other hand, God is over, overpowering in his strength. Along similar lines, we have Rechama, uh, the son of Rabbi Hanina, who maybe is this Rav Hanina Bar Papa, or it could be a different Rabbi Hanina. Isaiah 27, it says, I don't have any anger. And then Nachum, Nehum, one, two. It says that God is the Lord is vengeful and full of anger. So which is it? Like Kasha Kan Bi Yisrael, Kan Ba'iv So the answer is that God does not pour out all of His wrath on on His people, but He does on the pagans and the heathens uh, pour out anger. This is what the scripture is saying. We don't see it all the time, but uh, this is what the understanding is, how the rabbis explain this apparent contradiction. Rav Chanina Bar Papa Amar Chemein Li, Shekfar Nishpati, Mitnei Nishlayit Nishpati, Eya Shami V'Shayas. So, if we look at this whole verse, It says, I have no anger, if I, I have no wrath. If I had only given to me that I was at war with weeds and thorns, I would trample it and set it all on fire. So what does it mean? That God is angry. He does... Rabbi Chalina Bipapa said that, no. God has no anger, but he is full of anger meaning he's full of anger with the Jews and he would like to destroy them, but he already took an oath um, that he would not. In the previous verse, it says in, in Isaiah 27, 2, it says that the, the people of God are his vineyard and he promised, he took an oath, he swore that he would not destroy them. But if he didn't take the oath, he would have destroyed them. And so both verses are talking about the Jewish people. Let's go further. We said earlier on, on yesterday's daf that God doesn't want to punish his, his, anybody, Jew or Gentile. Behind the number of Alexandri, Alexandri said, Zechariah 12, verse 9, it says, And it will be on that day, says the Lord, that I will seek out to destroy all the nations that come to attack Jerusalem. Vakish me. So it says, I will seek, meaning I will ask. Who is God going to ask permission to destroy these nations? Amr Kodesh Baruch Havakish Shalahem. God says, I'm going to look into their history, to the history of these various nations that are attacking Jerusalem. That even those nations that are attacking Jerusalem, if they have some merit, like we mentioned before, the Persians helped build the temple, and all these other merits, so then God will not destroy them. He will rescue them. But if they have no merit, they will be destroyed. Behind the Rav Ma'idich Sivach Leibui Yishlach Yod and Befida Lam Shua. In Job 30, we have a lot of difficult words here. Verse 24. Rav explained, he says, but don't let him stretch out his hand in total fury if their lot is destruction. Talking about God, there is relief for them. 
Amalon and Kudush Baruch Hu, Yisrael, Shnidanus Yisrael, Ain and Idan Oisim Kaib de Kichavim, the Chsev Ava Ava, Ava Simana. When you need for Mahen Kifid, shall turn a Golas. God said to the Jewish people, when I judge the Jewish people, the Klal Yisrael, I don't judge them like I judge the heathens. By the heathens, we can read in Ezekiel 21.32, it says, they have sinned, they have sinned, and for their sins, I will ruin them, make Jerusalem into ruins. Uh, that's how he deals with now, that verse is talking about the Jewish people because it's talking about the destruction of Jerusalem. Um, we could understand it to mean that even the Jewish people, it will be bit by bit. This word pid, which means destruction, is like a, a chicken pecking. And so, like, when God punishes the Jews, he pecks away at them bit by bit, slowly, not, not all at once, to destroy them. And that gives an opportunity to repent. Another explanation of Philon Yisrael Oisen, Mitzvah Lefonai Eloki Ma'at, Kefit Shal Tarnagolan, Shemnaka Ba'ashba, Nim and Sarf and Lachesh Gonal. That even if the Jewish people only do a little bit of mitzvahs, and uh, and not all at once, but like a peck here, a peck there, like a like a chicken that's pecking around in a trash heap looking for something good, I'm going to bring them all together to make a big calculation of how many good deeds they've done. Shenamar befido lanshua. That's what it means that they'll have relief for their for their um, pecking around, for the, which could only also be understood as for their salvation. Another explanation of this term, relief, which is similar to the word for salvation. And the merit of crying out before me, I'm going to save them, rescue them. We'll go f on to explain what does it mean that God punishes the Jews a little bit, like pecking away small bits and, and pieces, so they should merit to have be rewarded in heaven. Abba says, It says in Hosea 7.13, I would redeem them, but they've spoken lies about me. She is Kalelam Haba Bema de Belayo Kazavim. I told them I'd redeem them with their money in this world, meaning that in the merit of giving charity, they would be um, worthy to go to heaven, but they still say lies about me. I think some people say, oh, you know, what does all this help? Behind the number of Rabbi Papi, Papi, Mishmeda Rava, this is where Rabbi Papi said the name of Rava, Maida Chesiv, Nisarti Chesakti, Zoyoisim, Veela, Yachash, Vura. As for me, I have afflicted them, I have strengthened their arms, but they think evil of me. That's in Hosea 7.15, two verses after the verse we just quoted. Amr Kodesh Baruch, God said, in Yamarti, Ayas, Rambi, Yisrim, Boil, Mahazak, Kodesh, Yech, I'm going to punish them in this world so that they should be strong in their arms in the next world, meaning have a big thing to carry. But they think bad of me. Meshachachma explains with Orsameach that God wanted to make sure that any sins a person does in this world, if a person is generally good, he should have a little bit of punishment in this world and not have any punishment in the next world. <laughs> Excuse me. However, the good people are worried that 
people are gonna people in this world who don't even believe that there's an, a, a heaven or hell are going to um, look at this and say, look, there's no point in being good because these good people are suffering. So that's considered to be bad. And so they're willing to uh, forego that just to, for the sake of God. And they could be rewarded for that too. Shtabach lehu, Rabbi Baal, Minei, Rav Safra, the Adam Gadol hu. Now, um, it's a very interesting, um, interesting historical piece of uh, idea. We know we have an idea in America of uh, tax exempt organizations and so forth. So, um, Rabbi Abahu told the ruling people who happened to be heretics and didn't believe in our teachings. Um, Rebao told Rav Safra, told the heretics who were the ruling class at the time, that Rav Safra was a great man. Therefore, So they gave him a tax exemption for 13 years because he was worthy. He was a, a great man, uh, a great rabbi. So these heretics met Rav Safra who ksiv rak as chem yadati mikol mishpachis v'adama k'nev k'y d'aleichem as kol b'nei seichem the aim is 3-2 it's a haftorah that we have um, a very difficult uh, passage that says I only knew you from all the, the families of the world therefore I'm going to hold you accountable for all of your sins which is a difficult portion, meaning to say that God is only going to punish the Jews because he, they should have known better, right? And, and the other people are not going to receive their full punishment because they, they, they didn't know any better. Man the Isle Sisya Brachame Masikla. So the heretics asked Rav Safra, what is this? Do you turn if you love somebody? Do you fight against them like this? Why would God, if God loves the Jewish people so much, why would He fight with them? Why would He be hostile against them? So Rav Safra didn't answer them because even though he was familiar with the verse, he didn't feel like he had a good answer to tell them. So he just kept quiet. So wait a second, aren't you supposed to be a big rabbi? Like, why don't you know how to answer this? So they started choking him with a handkerchief. So who happened to be passing by and saw this happening. They were choking Rav Safra Amalohi. They said, why are you choking him? You told us he's a great person. And we, exam- we gave him tax exempt status. Why can't he explain what does this verse in Amos mean? Every about said, I, when I said that Rav Safra was a, was a big rabbi, I meant that he knew Mishnayas and Bryce's, things that the Tanayim taught. I never said that he was a, a Bible scholar. So Amar so they asked him, my shna tundiyadisun, so the heretics asked, they said, Rabbi Abahu, what's your story? You know the Bible, and you can, you can teach the Bible to us. Why do you know the Bible better than him? Amalahu anandish chichinan kebechon minan afshin amanayin. In who? Well, oh. so an, so it says, "Anand shchichin gebeichin b'minan nafshin amayin." It says because we visit you all the time, 
uh, we take it upon ourselves to know the Bible well. Inu leimainu. But Rabbi Safra, even though he reads the Bible and he, he knows the Bible, he doesn't really study it in, in depth that he could g give you an answer. Armu leilema So uh, the heretics asked Rabbi Bahu, so tell us, what is Amos saying here? What is your interpretation? So Rabbi Bahu says, this is a parable, I'll say, l'ma adam adayma, adam shenoisha, mishnei b'nei adam, Let's say a person is collecting two debts from two people. One is his friend and one is his enemy. So from the friend, he's going to let him pay back in installments. Now when you're paying back in installments, you're going to pay back the whole thing and maybe even some interest. Usually the friend, you don't collect interest. Um, but sure, you're going to get the whole thing. The enemy, you're going to want the whole money, and you're going to ask for a lump sum. And sometimes you'll settle for a little bit less than the lump sum. And so that's why, that's what Amos is saying here, that to the, to the, so that's what Amos is saying here, that uh, when he says, because I only knew you from all the, families of the, of the land, of the world, I'm going to make you pay for all of your sins, meaning that everything gets paid for um, because it's only being taken out a little bit by bit in an installment plan. Um, but again, of course, like I said, we can repent and, and maybe be spared. There's mercy in that as well. I'm going to be Abba Bukahana. The Abba Barkahana said, like, and of course, the simple meaning is like we said, and um, this was only the answer that Rav was giving to the to, to the um, to heretics. But of course, the simple meaning of the verse is that uh, God judges the Israelites more harshly because they should have known better. So I'm Rav Abba Barkahana. More about how does God judge? Rav Abba Barkahana says. And in, in Genesis 18.25, where Abraham is arguing with God about destroying uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, he says, God forbid that you should do such a thing to kill the righteous with the wicked. So what is this word? God forbid is chalila. It's a strange word, chalila. We, we say it, chasva chalila. It's a biblical word, but it, what does it mean? Amr Avraham of Nei Kadosh Baruch Hu Bani Shalom Chu and Hu Meyasis Kadav Razalam is Tzadik in Russia. Abraham said to God, Master of the Universe, it would be a desecration to for you to kill the righteous with the wicked. For Lo Eivach Siv Echrati Memech Tzadik for Russia. But how could that be? In Ezekiel 21.8, it says, I will cut off the righteous and the wicked from you. So the Gemara answers with Sadiq Shayna Gomar. That's an imperfect Sadiq. Well, Sadiq Gomar Loi, but a perfect Sadiq, a perfectly righteous person, he should be uh, he, he should be spared. But wait a second. With Sadiq Gomar Loi, doesn't God also punish the perfectly righteous? says in Ezekiel 9 that the punishment will begin from the sanctuary. Sonny Rav Yosef, I'll take it Don't read from my temple, but from my holy people. These are the people who kept the whole Torah from A to Z, from Aleph to, to, to Sof. Hosem Nami. So too, the fact of the matter is they could they could have protested against the sinners and they didn't protest. That's like an imperfectly righteous person. It's a difficult word, a difficult teaching. Papa Rami, Papa said, and it's actually Samarav explains, uh, that there are 50 righteous in the midst of the city, meaning they're willing to go out and protest publicly. Like tomorrow, we see America has uh, half a million Sadiqim here that they're going to Washington, D.C. 
it's a march for life. It's a very harsh of a thing. And, and among them is Rabbi Yehuda Levin, so it's not sign, it should be benched. If Papa Rami, if Papa argued, it says in Psalm 7, verse 21, that God is angry every day. Also, in Nachum, Nahum, 1-6, it says, who can stand before the anger of God? So if God gets angry every day, uh, what's going on? Like Hasha Kon Biyachid, Kon Betzibur. And the answer is that a, an individual could not stand up before the anger of God, but the community can. Even though God gets angry every day against the, the community at large, we, we could stand it. So, Mutan Rabbanan, Rabbis taught in a brisa like this about this that God gets angry every day. God gets angry every day. How much is the anger of God? Rega, a second. How much is a second? A rega. It's one. It's a fraction, which is one out of. 53,848 parts of an hour. So he rega. That's a rega. That's one fifteenth of a second. So it's not even a second. So he rega. Nobody knows when that is. The only one who knew when that one fifteenth of a second was. That uh, that would be the Raga. Siv Bay Das Elion that, that Bilam knew the wisdom of the Supreme One. Alright, we'll continue a little later.